What is up guys? So with the start of the next Arrowverse season, we'll be getting a new Arrowverse NCW show titled Superman and Lois, a show I am very excited for, a show that I've wanted to see ever since the Tyler Hawkins Superman debuted on Supergirl. And a little over a week ago, I made a video going over like certain details about the show that were revealed, characters were appearing, character breakdowns, maybe like character speculation, and other details about the show that I wanted to talk about. If you want to see that video, link will be in the top right corner of this one. But ever since then, there's been a number of details that we've learned about the show show, not through rev reveals, like nothing's really been revealed ever since then. Everything that we know now has been leaked through a pilot script. Now, this script of the pilot was leaked online. I didn't get to read it. I think it was taken down by Warner Brothers. I can't find it anywhere. However, I don't really think I need to read it. Most of the details, I think, were like summarized in in articles and things like that. So, I'll be, I'll be talking about things from there. So, if I miss something from the script, maybe you've read it, maybe let me know in the comments down below because I, I can't find it anywhere. Where, with that in mind, this video will basically be spoiling the entirety of the pilot of Superman and Lois if this is indeed the actual script. And if this is indeed the pilot that ends up airing, because, I mean, pilots do go through a ton of tweaks, like, more so than any other episode, because they want to perfect the beginning, but because this is a breakdown of the script that was leaked, you can consider this video in it, like, the, the entire thing one big spoiler for the show, because it will be things about the pilot, things that are spoiled about the pilot, so I would recommend not watching this video if you don't want to be spoiled. Nothing too major anything about the entire show, I mean, it is only the pilot, you can probably think about what going to happen, but there are spoilers, however, I would recommend watching the video I made a week and a half ago, because nothing there is spoilers, just things that were officially revealed. With that in mind, let's get right into the video. So the script apparently begins with uh, Clark recounting his entire life, the events of his entire life, starting with him uh, landing in Smallville. Nothing about Krypton exploding, nothing about his pod going straight to Earth, because, I mean, that is uh, that is something that was mentioned quite a bit, uh, like every episode really on Supergirl, as she mentions uh, Krypton exploding, her and her cousin being sent to Earth, but her pod is knocked off course to the Phantom Zone. I don't know, maybe Clark will mention that as well, but maybe that's just not as important. He lands in Smallville, he is found by the Kents, and then it says that his father dies at 16. Now, it doesn't say anything about him growing up. I'm assuming that we may be seeing a bit of him growing up in the beginning of the episode, like maybe him as a baby, as a kid, as a teenager, just using his powers, discovering his, power, his powers, things like that, like similar to Man of Steel. But one thing that's also very similar to Man of Steel is that Jonathan Kent dies when Clark is a teenager. In that movie, he died. I think Clark was like 16, 17, 18, or something like that. Well, here, Clark is indeed 16 years old. I don't know, maybe this is like becoming some sort of like staple of the Superman lore where Jonathan Kent does die when Clark is like 16 years old. Currently in the comics, he is alive. He was actually originally like recently brought back to life through a timeline change by the Doomsday Clock events, but I feel like that maybe because he died yeah, when uh, Clark was a teenager in Man of Steel, now also in Superman and Lois, maybe that just that will become a thing in the Superman lore. So then Clark, as an adult, moves to Metropolis, becomes Superman, and this is one part of the script that I was able to find because somebody posted it on Twitter. I'll put the image up here. It basically says that Clark saves a little boy from a car. The boy says uh, that, that he has a cool costume, and Superman says that his mom made it for him, and then that is his debut as Superman. This is a combination of two, or one, a very iconic Superman moment, and another pretty awesome Superman moment. The iconic one is the is the is obviously the cover from Action Comics number one, where he's holding that car. This is being adapted of sorts into this scene, but also this panel right here from Superman for All Seasons where he saves this little boy from falling, and then the little boy says that uh, Superman has a cool costume, and he says verbatim what he says in this script, thanks, my mom made it for me. This is a really cool moment where it, it basically combines those two iconic or maybe pretty good scenes or moments from Superman's comic history. And because of this, I feel like we're going to be getting a lot of that on this show, which is something that I'm very, very excited for. And I'm hoping the show pays respect to the Superman lore, which based off this, this one scene, I'm, I'm guessing it will. And after debuting as Superman, he meets Lois Lane, they fall in love, they move in together, they get married, and then they have twins, Jonathan and Jordan Kent, and that is basically the entirety of the beginning of the episode. Now, one thing that I really hope this does is basically flesh out the Superman timeline, because at this point, like, based off the Earth-38 timeline, and also actually something we learned from the first episode of The Flash post-crisis, is that Supergirl did land on Earth in 2003 when Clark was already Superman, so he had to become Superman sometime before then, and I'm hoping 
maybe this show finally confirms when that is, which could be maybe the year 2000, maybe the year 2003, sometime around then, and I'm hoping it does that, hoping it explains or confirms when he met Lois, and all of those things, and I'm just hoping they flesh out the timeline. The rest of the script reveals three events that happen to Clark, three things that are pretty terrible. I mean, one thing is just him dealing with something as Superman, but the other two things are things that indeed deeply, deeply affect him in his career and his personal life. The first thing is just the thing he deals with as Superman, a nuclear power plant goes berserk, and Sam Lane, his father-in-law, calls him in to help. Sam Lane, as confirmed by a character description, does know that Clark Kent is Superman, and also he's a character who previously appeared in the Arrowverse, appearing in Supergirl Season 1, I'm pretty sure it was only that season, played by uh, Glenn Marshauer. The actor may be brought back, but because of the crisis, he doesn't necessarily need to, and they can just recast him, but we already knew he was coming back, that's not what we learn here. We do learn, however, that maybe because Sam Lane calls Clark, they maybe have either a good relationship, or maybe he at least trusts and respects Superman to the point where he can ask him for help, because typically in the comics, they don't really have a good relationship, and Sam Lee is not the type of person who would call Superman for help, it's more of a thing that he would reluctantly agree to work with him or something, so maybe this, uh, this shows that they have a better relationship than they typically do in the comics. The second thing we see from the script that happens to Clark in this one is that is something that deeply affects him and deeply affects his career as he is fired from the Daily Planet. That's actually something we already knew. I mentioned that in my last video about Superman and Lois, but what we didn't know is the reason he's being fired and the reason, other than just budget cuts, is that uh, the Daily Planet was purchased by Morgan Edge, who is described as somebody who doesn't care about facts or journalism. He just cares about clicks or things like that, which really reminds me of what they did recently on Supergirl with Andrea Rojas, where that character had a very, very similar personality, very, very similar description. But Andre Rojas is obviously not the only thing that reminds me of Morgan Edge on Supergirl because Morgan Edge appeared on Supergirl. He had a recurring role during Supergirl Season 3 where he was definitely an antagonist. He definitely he was similar to how he's being described in this show, which is a very, very rich person who is not really, doesn't get along with the, the main characters and is an antagonist, which uh, again, just like Sam Lane, this is a character they can bring back the actor, they cannot bring back the actor, they aren't really, they are really held back by the actors that that previously played them because of the crisis they can change whatever they want with that in mind though i thought that the actor who played morgan edge was pretty good in the role so i would not mind if they brought him back but at the same time like i said it wouldn't be the end of the world if they didn't I should say that Morgan Edge is actually typically the owner of the Daily Planet in the comics, so this is another thing that they are incorporating from the comics. But another character who is often the owner, other than Morgan Edge, is Bruce Wayne. So maybe down the line, because Morgan Edge is going to be an antagonist, maybe down the line he's arrested, he goes to prison or something, and maybe Bruce Wayne comes in and buys the Daily Planet. I don't know, maybe that's something we'll get to. Now, Clark lost his job in this episode, so it can't really possibly get worse for him today, right? Well, it does. It's uh, Losing his job is not the worst thing that happens to him in this episode, as he hears a scream. I'm guessing he's in Metropolis. He hears a scream with a super hearing. All the way from Smallville, he hears a scream from his mother saying, come home. He rushes home, but he finds his mother dead. Another thing that happens to him in this episode, Martha Wayne, or Martha Kent, I mean, Martha Kent dies in this episode, which is not what I expected. Martha Kent, I expected to have a large role in this, uh, in, in this show because she was described not as a character with a large role. She was just, she was confirmed as one of the characters who will appear along with, I'm guessing what is the rest of the main cast, but then she just dies in that very first episode. Very, very dark for the show. I mean, he loses his job and then his mother's his mother dies seemingly in the same day or at least in the same week. Very, very close to each other. It's really, really, it's a very, very dark beginning to this show, but it definitely, it's, it's definitely different from what I expected. And the last thing we learned from the script, which is not the last thing I'm going to talk about, just the last thing from the script, is that Lana, Lana Lang, a character who will have a large role in this show, or at least have a role on this show, tells Clark something that will make him rethink his life. Now, I've seen people say that this could be that she still is, she's still in love with him as they dated when they were teenagers. Now, I don't think that would make him rethink his life. He's clearly in love with Lois. I don't think that would make him rethink anything. The What I think he's telling her is that maybe some sort of event, some sort of experience, 
experience that they went through when they were teenagers, maybe Clark looked at it very, very differently to how he will look at it now, to how he looks at it now that Lana tells him. Other than that, I can't think of any other thing that we can see from this, and this is something that we'll just have to wait for the pilot to come out, or maybe a trailer to come out, to learn what this does mean. So that's the script, but there's two other things that I want to mention that have to do with this pilot episode that we did learn. For one, at least the pilot will have flashbacks. I'm honestly hoping the entirety of the show has flashbacks, like maybe like half of the show, maybe like a third of the show, much like Arrow, focuses on the beginning of his career. I would love to see like flashbacks to when Superman began in the early 2000s, maybe even a little bit before that, potentially either leading up to when he found Supergirl or leading up to an event that uh, changed that uh, an event that really really affects the show maybe for a couple years it's something that will lo- I would love to see because we, we really never we never see the uh, the beginnings of his career those like 20 years that we are never going to see that I would like to see a lot of but uh, certain characters who will apparently appear in these flashbacks are uh, Jonathan Kent before he dies Martha Kent Perry White who may be dead also at this point Ron uh, trope who's a character who works at the Daily Planet however in the Arrowverse. He's actually a character who, on Earth One at least, worked at the Star City, uh, Starling City newspaper. But I'm guessing on Earth Prime, he is uh, he's in front. He's from Metropolis, and he works at the Daily Planet. A character named uh, Max Menken, who is a uh, who's not a character from the comics. He's a character from some sort of like play or something. And then also apparently Morgan Edge and Pete Ross will be mentioned in the flashbacks. Morgan Edge already went over him, but Pete Ross is the childhood best friend of Clark Kent, who will be mentioned in these flashbacks. And the last thing there is to talk about is a pretty big one, probably the biggest thing from this entire video, but the main villain of the show has seemingly been revealed. Now, in my last video, I went over a character named uh, The Stranger, a character who was described as the main villain of the season, and we're going to be learning his identity at the end of the first episode. So basically, all we knew is that he's some sort of stranger, and that he is a man, because it did say he. That's all we knew about the character. However, based off that description, based off how ominous he sounded, he really reminded me of a character named the Mr. Oz, who is actually Jor-El, the grandfather of Jordan and uh, Jonathan Cantor. In the comics, it was just Jonathan. This time around, it would also be Jordan, but also the father of Clark Kent and also the uncle of Kara zor That is the character that I was reminded of the most. Turns out, it's not going to be Jor-El. It's not going to be Mr. Oz. Maybe we're going to be seeing him sometime, sometime down the line in the show. Don't know. But it's not going to be Mr. Oz. Instead, it seems like Superman and Lois will be t- going down the path that Arrow and the Flash went down, with the villain of the first season just basically being the main villain of that hero, Merlin for Green Arrow, Reverse Flash for The Flash, and for Superman, Lex Luthor. Now, Lex Luthor is a very, very good villain. I mean, he's arguably maybe the second most iconic villain of all time behind the Joker, maybe also behind Darth Vader. He's definitely up there as one of the most iconic villains of all time. And even in the Arrowverse, he's one of the best villains. John Cryer's awesome in the role. His storyline during Supergirl Season 4, Crisis on Infinite Earths, and currently during Supergirl Season 5 are all pretty damn good. And one thing that I've wanted to see for a very long time, basically ever since we saw Superman for the first time and then we saw Lex Luthor, is... Is something that we still haven't seen really and that's those two characters going head to head. John Cryer's side or Lex Luthor's side of the rivalry was awesome during Supergirl Season 4 and I would love to see both Superman's side and also like them clashing together maybe in this show. However, while Lex Luthor will be the villain of Season 1, that is either uh, not officially confirmed, just something that we can say at this point based off certain details, that uh, Lex Luthor will be the main villain. However, it's possible that John Cryer will not play him, and it's possible that it will not be the Earth-38 slash Earth-Prime version of Lex Luthor. Something that most or at least half of the Arrowverse shows have been doing is uh, doppelgangers coexisting with their Earth Prime counterparts. They did it off screen on The Flash with it being confirmed that uh, that Jay Garrick and his wife Joan Williams exist on Earth Prime, meaning that they exist while also their uh, their Earth Prime counterparts, Henry Allen and Nora Allen, at least existed for a very long time until uh, still technically do exist, but they are dead. But then there is on Batwoman, there was Beth who exists now or actually did exist. She is also dead at this point. 
And they, they have the storyline where they can't exist for the same time, something that they don't really explore on any other show. So I don't know what that was about. But then on Supergirl, they've been really, really getting into this, where we, especially when shots counterparts, the multiple doppelgangers we got of Brainiac 5, this Al character, a couple Dark Kryptonian counterparts, all of these people exist on the same world as the Earth Prime counterparts, or at least the Earth Prime counterparts that did exist before maybe they died. So that's three shows that have already gone into it, except for, I guess, The Flash only did it off screen. But now, Superman and Lois will be doing it as well, as the Lex Luthor will be seeing in, in the first season, at least the Superman and Lois, will not be from Earth 38 slash Earth Prime, will maybe not be played by John. Cryer, although he can still be, but he will be a Lex Luthor from a multi a universe that was lost during Crisis on Infinite Earths. Now, I am a little bit torn on this. On one hand, I would have liked to see more of John Cryer's Lex Luthor on Superman and Lois. I mean, I get it right now, he's basically a Supergirl character, but I would prefer for him to move over to Superman because he's a Lex Luthor. He shouldn't be on a Supergirl show when he could be on a Superman show. However, while I am disappointed by that, I would say that I, I do like this idea as I think it could bring up a, lot, a couple different possibilities of exploring certain different avenues of Lex Luthor. One version of Lex Luthor I would love to see is this apex predator Lex Luthor who is the actual current one in the comics who uh, the regular Lex Luthor died he uploaded his consciousness into this robotic body and he works for the mother of the monitor the anti-monitor and the world forger a goddess of sorts named Perpetua I think it's a very very cool story actually this is my favorite Justice League uh, story ever that went on for a while there that actually only recently ended but uh, I would love to see that version of Lex Luthor in this show as it can be an alternate version of Lex Luthor instead of something that happens to the main one, but I do think that uh, maybe something that is slightly more likely is that we'll be seeing something that connects to Crisis on Infinite Earth, and that's the Earth 3 version of Lex Luthor, Alexander Luthor. Alexander Luthor from Earth 3 is the son of the Earth 3 versions of Lex Luthor and Lois Lane, a world where the Justice League are the crime syndicate and they're villains, while Lex Luthor is a hero. They have a son, and while their, their Earth was being destroyed during Crisis on Infinite Earths, uh, he sent away his son, Alexander Luthor, to an alternate universe, and Alexander was found by the Monitor. Alexander was a hero during Crisis, however, during Infinite Crisis, he acted, along with Superboy Prime, as the main villain, and I do think because of the Crisis on Earth connection for one, and because of maybe the Lex Luthor, Lois Lane of Earth 3 connection, and also that he's the son of Lex Luthor, while this show is focusing on the sons of Superman, maybe he will be the main villain of this show. We know it's going to be an alternate version of Lex Luthor, we know it's going to be from Crisis on Infinite Earths, so I think that the most likely option is probably Alexander Luthor, however the option I would like to see the most is definitely Apex Predator Lex. So anyway, that's it for this video. Let me know your thoughts on everything I talked about in this video, all the leaks, maybe what your thoughts about who the main villain is, Lex, this alternate version of Lex Luthor. But if you like this video, make sure to leave a like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.